Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here. Today I want to talk about solar generators and whether or not they're worth it. But let's talk about them first. First of all, they're not generators. A generator actually generates power, and a power station without a solar panel is nothing more than a power station. It's a battery with an inverter to provide 120 volt or AC power, and they have a number of DC ports, which would be your 12 volt ports, your USB ports, that sort of thing. That's really all they are. They're power stations. They provide a battery, and they have a display that tells you the battery capacity at the time of use, how much power is coming in, how much is going out, all that kind of stuff. But they're not generators. So getting that out of the way right up front, are they worth it? Maybe you're looking at buying one. I know a lot of people are. And I suppose we should look at why you might be doing that. Maybe you've just gone through an outage. Maybe you, you, know, you had a two or three day outage, you had no power, you don't have a generator, so you couldn't keep your house running and you need something to keep your refrigerator running or maybe run your CPAP at night, that kind of stuff. Or perhaps you're looking at camping, you got a camper, RV, maybe your tent camping, and you wanna have power out there when you're camping for various needs. Well, these things shine in that regard. A lot of people are also looking at them for home backup systems. And there are some big power stations out there that are really starting to push the edge and go into the off-grid solar type systems or solar backup systems that you can use to power your house during an outage. I'm only really gonna talk about the smaller ones because frankly, if we're gonna get into the big ones, I really think that those have a long way to go before they're truly cost effective. So let's not dive into that side of things. Let's talk about what most people use power stations for. But most people use them perhaps like I did in the very beginning when I got my first one, which was a little Jackery 550, it's just to run a CPAP while I go camping. But eventually I started moving into wanting to have a refrigerator when I was out camping as well, instead of a cooler, throw the coolers out and get a refrigerator. But how do you run a refrigerator then if you don't have power? Well, power stations can do that. You can even run a camper or a camp trailer off of some of the bigger power stations. So are power stations worth it? Well, I think in the right circumstances, they're absolutely worth it, and I love them. That's why I've done several reviews of them. So what are the big differences between a power station and an actual generator? Well, I mean, if you've ever had a generator, maybe you don't, so this might be new to you, but if you've ever had one, you know that one tank of fuel in your typical cheapo 3,500 watt Harbor Freight generator can run for several hours. And then if you run out of fuel, you can just put more fuel in it and keep going. Now, of course, during an outage, even a 2000 watt power station can run your refrigerator for an extended period of time. I've run refrigerators on 1500 watt hour power stations for over 30 hours. So they can absolutely do that. But the more you use it, the less time you get because you're depleting it. If you think of it like a bucket of water with a hole in the bottom and it's dripping out the bottom and that's what you're using, well, eventually that bucket's gonna be empty. And the only way to charge that back up is either with 120 volt power, for example, off of a generator, off of your house if the power comes back on, or even like a DC to DC charger that you can hook up to your car. The only other way is through solar panels. And the other thing to consider if you're looking at power stations and you're wondering are they worth it is cost. Obviously a generator, you know, they're not that expensive. I bought one for $300 about 15 years ago. I think I could probably get the same generator today for 500 bucks. Is $500 a lot of money? Well, if it is, then power stations are really not the place to look because you can keep refilling the gas tank on that generator and keep it running versus a power station. Now, I will tell you this. If you have a small generator that can produce, say, 2,000 watts and you have a power station that charges up within a couple hours off of that generator, well, then you got the best of both worlds. So let's take a look at this power station because this is one I've been playing with. I've been running a CPAP on it and running CPAP tests with it. And I've run a heater on it and, and tried to see what that heater would do. I've also run the 400 watt solar panel that they sent me with this one. And yes, they sent this to me. Thank you all powers for that. It was free. So take that for what it's worth. But I will tell you this, despite this being free and sent to me, I'm gonna be honest with you. So first of all, let's talk about the All Powers R1500. This has an 1152 watt hour battery, and that seems like an odd number. You'll see usually 1024, something like that. But I think because power stations are typically around 80% efficient, meaning that you're gonna get about 80% to maybe 85% out of the battery, 
they bumped the size up a little bit so that you can actually get 1,000 watt hours out of it. Because if you think about it, 80% of 1,000 watt hours is 800 watt hours. That's pretty normal. And it's something to consider when buying a power station. If you buy a power station that has 1,000 watt hours and you think, I've got 1,000 watt hours, I can use every bit of that, well, you're wrong. Because it takes power to run the screen on the front. It takes power to run the inverter. They have fans in them to keep them cool when they're running, and those take power. So that 80% efficiency means that it's using up to 20% of its own battery power to actually operate, run the power station itself. So the first thing I saw with this and that I'm going to retest is that when I plugged in my 1500 watt ceramic heater, I only ever saw it draw about 800 watt. And I found that odd. In fact, so odd that at first I said, well, maybe it's because it's in the sun and the sun's hitting it and, and it doesn't want to run that hot. So I took it and I plugged it in in my house and it ran up to 1160 watts before I shut it off. Okay, so at my house, 1160 on this 800, that to me could be an issue. So we're gonna test that again here in just a second and I'll show you the results. The next thing I will say is that you can get this with a 400 watt foldable solar panel. Now that solar panel is about 40 volts. I think it's operating voltage is 37.5. And honestly, a foldable solar panel can be a great asset to have, but it's really important to understand the limitations of a foldable solar panel. And in order to get maximum power out of it, you've got to get that thing flat as can be. And frankly, I would say to get maximum power out of foldable solar panels, you need to mount them to something to make sure they're flat. Then the next thing you need to consider is that they need to be aimed perfectly at the sun. If you don't have them aimed right, <laughs> well, you're not gonna get the most power out of them. So this can take quite a bit of voltage actually. So this one can actually take up to 95 volts and I think 13 and a half amps with a max of 650 watts. Now, with an 1152 watt hour battery and 650 watts of solar, it should charge up within a couple hours. That's actually not bad. And I've got to give all powers a little bit of kudos for that because most of the units I tested, they run in around the 400 watt range. Maybe at 800 watt hours, 400's okay, but I've got a Jackery 550 that only allows supposedly 100 watts of solar. It's really 96 and you never get it. You get about 86. So to have 650 watts capacity, that is very nice. And this unit also has battery expansions that you can get from them. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm sorry all powers for saying this, but I'm not a big fan of those, because typically they're more expensive than just buying a LiPo 4 battery and plugging it into the solar input, and then putting on, say, a 10 amp charger with solar panels or something. Let's take a look at the all powers. We'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so we've got the main panel. On the side here, we've got USB ports. We've got two USB-A ports. Those are 18 watt ports and two USB-C ports, which are 100 watt ports. And I like to see the 100 watt ports. A lot of them put ports in that aren't 100 watts. I like to see 100 watts. I want as much as I can get, even if I don't need it all. And to turn that on, all you gotta do is hit that button right there, that turns it on. And it also turns on your DC output, which is your cigarette lighter type output, which is a 10 amp, 120 volt output. So it's 120 watts, okay? We've got our AC, all I gotta do is push that button, it turns on the inverter, it tells me it's at 60 hertz, so that's gonna give me 120 volts across these four ports. Turn that one off. Let's flip this guy around a little bit so you can see this side. Now, it's got some doors on it. If you push the door, it pops out. I actually like that feature, so that's something that All Powers does that's kind of nice. A lot of them have all kinds of different ideas. I like these pop-out these pop out doors. It's got two battery input ports here for external batteries. So if you want to run external batteries, they have that built in. And again, those will usually charge up at the same time the power station does. Pop this guy open here. We've got AC charger. 100 to 120 volts, 15 amp max, AC overload protector, and solar charger input, solar car input, 12 to, this says 95 volts, 13 amps max, which is an XT60. Now, thank you All Powers for doing this. I like XT60s and XT90s. I don't like it when they use other ones because everybody can use XT60s. Beyond that, there's really not a whole lot to see except 
It also has two wireless outputs for 15 watts. I don't have my cell phone, so I can't test it out. Well, I couldn't anyway, because I've got an Android that doesn't have that feature, but if you've got a phone that can do that kind of charging, you just set it down there, turn your 12 volt on, and away it goes. Now, I will tell you this, if this unit has an app, I don't care. I don't like the apps. I've tried them on all kinds of different units. I think they're useless. I'm sorry for anybody that likes them. I'm not into apps. I have what I need right here on the front. That's all I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and I'm gonna turn on my power and we'll turn that guy on all the way to max. It says we're at 374, 400, it's climbing up in watts. So let's see if this will actually go above 800 watts because folks, I mentioned this earlier, if they say this is an 1800 watt inverter and I plug in something that should use 1000 to 1200 watts, it should darn well give me that. I'm gonna let that run for a little bit, folks. We're at 1080, we're still climbing. Now, one thing I have noticed is that the all power shows a little bit lower wattage than what the watt meter shows. I find that interesting, and I have seen that multiple times on multiple power stations. So I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't know why it would do that, but I see 1100 on the watt meter, and I see 1075 on the all powers. I'm not sure that that's a big deal, but it's important to pay attention to that, I think. At this point, I've got to say kudos to all powers because it did what it needed to do. Now, where are we at on power? We are currently at 91%. So the next thing I want to talk about is they didn't send a lot of plugs with this unit, which surprised me. Normally, when I get power stations, they give you all kinds of plugs, and this one didn't. It gave me my 120 volt plug, which is what I call your standard, it's your standard household item. Some companies feel they gotta put in ones that can take 1800 watts or something, but you know what? These will do what you need it to do. So all we gotta do is plug that in, and we're gonna go ahead and charge that back up. See what we get. All right, so we're plugged in and we're starting to pull wattage. It's climbing up now. And this unit should be able to draw quite a bit of power, folks. So AC input on this 100 to 120 volts, 15 amp max. So if you figure uh, that's about 1800 watts that it can pull when charging. However, I only drew it down to 91%. So if it's not gonna pull all of that, I'm not surprised by that. It is a lithium iron phosphate battery or a LIFEPO4. All right, so this isn't about all powers, but I did want to mention the all powers unit because I decided to really play with it and push it, and I've been impressed with it. You want to power a freezer, you want to run your computer, your internet, you know, that kind of stuff, run a CPAP at night, then absolutely power stations are good for that. That is where they shine, and of course, camping, RVing, that kind of stuff, they are great. The other thing these can be really good for is small off-grid cabins or tiny homes. So if you're looking for a power station for a tiny home or a small off-grid cabin, are these worth it? Then I would tell you yes. If you're not into do-it-yourself solar. If you're into do-it-yourself solar, you're gonna spend less money building a solar power setup for your cabin than you are with one of these. But these are really convenient, especially, for example, if you've got a cabin in the woods, it's an off-grid cabin in the middle of the woods somewhere that you don't live at. You go out there on weekends and the occasional week here and there throughout the year, then power stations are great for that because you could get a power station like this one, maybe with an extra battery, and you could run your cabin all weekend long especially with their 400 watt solar panel that you could just mount on the outside of your cabin. As long as you're not trying to run air conditioning or electric heat, that kind of stuff. Even an electric coffee pot, because they do use a fair amount of power. And it's all about how much power you're going to use. So are power stations really worth it? I would say yes, depending on the application. Sort of a yes, but. For the most part, if you're looking at camping, RVing, building a small tiny home or off-grid cabin, and you're really not expecting to use a lot of power, power stations are absolutely great for that. And if you're looking for some outage peace of mind where the power goes out for two hours, four hours, 12 hours, something like that, power stations can be very good for that. And what I would tell you about buying one is do an audit on what you actually want to be able to run and for how long. Once you do that, and you can, there's lots of calculators online to do that, but once you figure out, well, I want to run a refrigerator, a freezer, 
I want to run, um, you know, my, my computer and my TV or whatever, my internet. This is how much power all those things use. Once you know that, you can figure out how big of a power station you need. But just bear in mind that a, even a power station like this one with 1,152 watt hours, it's not going to run your refrigerator for more than about 24 hours. You can do the add-ons to it, and those add-ons, each one's gonna give you that extra power that you need. But again, it's a power station, not a generator. So I hope that helps somebody out, folks. I really do appreciate your watching, and thanks to all my members for being part of the channel. I appreciate your support. Folks, I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. I hope you all have a great day, and I hope I helped someone out today. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.